Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the T's Official Study Manual 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, We'll solve some problems that you will find on page number 155. Please turn to it. Always make sure the book is in front of you. Today is our day number 17. Day number 17. And today we'll do today we'll do the last two problems on the page, page number uh, number uh, problem number four and problem number five. Let's take a look at problem number four. It says one batch of cookies. One batch of cookies requires three quarter cup of flour. Don't ask me why I put flour in capital letter. The question is how much flour is needed for one and a half patches. Very good. How much flour is needed? One, you know, one and a half batches. First thing first, before I forget it, in the book on page 155 where you see the problem, I think the problem says something else. There's a misprint. In the book there's a misprint. They meant to say one and a half patches, not one and five eight. Because what happened was when I saw one and five eight and I realized that that's going to give some very cumbersome and very weird calculation. And I know that those things do not happen on this exam. This exam is very straightforward. So I said to myself, well, you know what I said to myself. I said to myself, self, why don't you go in the back and look at the answer, look at the answers and see what they have in the answer. So I did just that. And when I, read, when I read the answer to, uh, explanation in the answers, I realized that they meant to say one and a half, not one and not one and one fifth. This is one 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 and five eight. That's the misprint. So we will deal with what exactly what they meant to say, which is one and a half. Let's begin, shall we? And I just realized that I have taken up too much room. I have taken way too much room, so I'm going to erase all of this now. So one batch requires three quarter of flour. How much for one and a half batch? That's all it is. And we're going to do it. We're going to do it two different ways. We're going to do it two different ways. Method one and method two. And you can pick whichever one you prefer. So the method one is simply you set it up as a proportion problem: batches versus flour. A simple proportion problem, and we know that one batch, we are told, requires three quarter of flour, three quarter cup of flour. The question is, we want to make one and a half batch. Is that what it says? How much flour is needed for one and a half batch? So we want to make one and a half batch. The question is, how much flour do we need? And that's all it is. You simply solve the thing, and that's all. So let's cross multiply. One times x is just going to be x. And it's going to be one and a half times three quarters. Okay, let's finish it up. Okay, pay attention here. So here we go. One times three and a quarter is simply three and a quarter. Plus half times three quarters. Plus half times three quarter. There you go. Now the problem here is that this quantity plus half times three quarters, not addition, half times three quarters. Now the problem here is that this quantity has a denominator of four and this quantity has a denominator of two times four. Why don't we make the denominator the same so we can add these two fractions by multiplying this quantity by multiplying this quantity by two over two. Voila. That's it. Now they both have the denominator of eight and we can finish it up. Two times three is six. One times three is three. Six plus three is nine. So the answer is it's going to require nine eight, nine eight cup of flowers, 
which is same as 1 and 1 eighth. That's the answer. So that was one way of doing it. There's two other ways. Other way, instead of setting it up in such a formal way with a proportion, we just use the logic. We use simple logic, common sense, and the common sense tells us that if common sense tells us that if one batch, if one batch requires requires three quarter cup of flour, I'm going to not roll the right right down. I don't have the room. If one batch requires three quarter cup of flowers, then that logic dictates. It stands to reason that if that is true, then that implies that half a batch, half a batch must require half of that amount. Makes perfect sense. One more time. If one batch requires three quarter cup of flour, then half a batch must require half of that amount. That's it, we're done. Because we want it, we want it one and a half batch. We have one batch, one batch here, half a batch here, let's add them up. So one and a half, one and a half batch would require, would require this amount, which is for one batch. I'm going to put it here, three quarter, plus that amount, which is half times three quarter. And what do you know? It's the exact same thing. Three quarter plus, three quarter plus, half times three, half times three quarter. And you can work on this, this thing just the way we did it here. Because it is the exact same thing. Let's do the next one, okay? Number five. I need a quick break. Let's do the next one. Number five. Number five says... Number five says that 1,225 students Take the bus, and we are told further the total. We have a total of 1,955 students, out of which 1,225 take the bus. The question simply is, what percentage of the students take bus? That's all it is. It says approximately. Approximately, that's the important word here. Approximately, what percentage? Take the bus. Now, if you look in the back of the book, in the answer choices, you will see that they, even though the, the problem ex explicitly says that they're looking for approximate answer, they do the precise calculation, which is the damn silly thing to do, because especially, even in the, even in the ordinary questions, the answers are not very close to each other. And particularly when they use the word approximately, they go out of their way to make sure that the answers are not close together, because otherwise, how would you approximate? So approximation is exactly what we are told to do, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're not going to do the precise calculation. So let's get going, shall we? So the precise calculation would require, precise calculation would require that we divide 1,225 by 1,955. And of course, if that's what you want to do, be my guess. I'm just going to approximate. So we're going to pretend, we're going to pretend that top, top here, instead of 1,225, I'm just going to pretend it's 1,200. And the bottom, 1,955, let's just approximate is 2,000. So far so good? Alright. First thing we're going to do is we're going to divide top and bottom. We're going to divide top and bottom by 10. If we divide top and bottom by 10, 0 is going to drop out. And once we have done that, let's divide top and bottom by 2. If we divide 200 by 2, we get 100. And if we divide 60, oh, 120 by 2, we get 60. Can you guess what percentage it might be if it happens to be 60 out of 100? Of course it's 60%. It's 60% but it's an approximate answer. The precise answer, okay, approximation, as I always tell my clients, approximation is fine and dandy, approximation is fine and dandy, but at all times while you're approximating things, you must be fully cognizant of whether you are underestimating or overestimating. You must always know that. You must always be aware of it. Are we underestimating here or are we overestimating? When we look at the answer choices, 
are we going to look for something that, that is a little bit less than 60% or something that is a little bit more than 60%? That is very important to understand uh, before we pick, uh, go jump for one answer choice. Let's see what's going on here. Two things are going on. First thing is that the numerator is 25 more than what we pretended. We pretended it was exactly 1200. It's actually 1225. So that tells us that we are underestimating. This is an underestimation. The second reason we are underestimating is because instead of dividing by a smaller number, 1955, because if we divide by the smaller number, the result is bigger. Instead of dividing by 1955, we are dividing by a bigger number. So in both cases, overestimation is going on. Sometimes what happens is that in one direction you overestimate a little bit and the other direction you underestimate a little bit, they sort of negate each other. That is not what's going on here. We are definitely underestimating it. We must look for some answer twice that is slightly more than 60%. That's all it is. That's all. And like I said before, if you want to do the precise calculation, knock yourself out. I'll see you tomorrow. If you want to get hold of me, you can reach me at keshwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright, bye now.